Hi everyone, Piet Calamain here. I hope you're having an awesome day. What is link tuning? Why would you need it? How can you do it? This is what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's dive into it. Now, why would you need to do link tuning in your design? Basically, it comes down to correct timing in your system architecture. Let's um, make it a bit more clear with an example. Let's imagine that you are making a design where you need to incorporate an SDRAM. Basically, in these data sheets of SDRAMs, there's typical clock frequencies, 200 megahertz, all the way down to 133 megahertz, but you will see key timing parameters. That will return time and time again in this data sheet. Also, you will have um, graphs like this. Now, what is it about? First of all, the main idea here is that at the clock transition, your data must be valid. So data is being clocked in that SDRAM. It means that the data should be on the SDRAM inputs at the correct clock transition. So what we see over here is there is a clock transition. The data should be valid at that point. The moment that you're clocking, data should already be valid. Now what we do see over here, there's a clock period of five nanoseconds, high and a low time of 2.5 nanoseconds. What the data sheet indicates is that you have a command data setup time, so this part of 1.5 nanoseconds. So you need to respect that. That is the main thing you need to look into your specific data sheets to find this value. It's command or data setup time, something similar uh, mentioned like this. You will always find it. Now, if you look then at standard PCB FR4 material, the propagation speed there is 15 centimeters per nanosecond. Meaning, if we calculate it back for 1.5 nanosecond, we can accept a maximum line length difference of 15 times 1.5, so 22.5 centimeter. So that means your data has to travel over a line. The line has a certain length. 15 centimeters per nanoseconds means that this 1.5 nanoseconds is 22.5 centimeters. So means that length difference between different lines can be maximum 22.5 centimeters to still be in line with this spec. This is the main gist about length tuning and getting it right. Now there's two main conditions. First of all, your driver must also respect the setup time, of course. So the data must be valid on the master 1.5 nanoseconds before the clockage. And second thing also, the clock line must be the longest trace. This is important stuff uh, to remember. Because of course, you want to be clocking your data at the moment that the data is already there. Now that's the theory. Let's look at a practical example. That's always the nice stuff, of course. Um, so how can you do this in Altium Designer? First of all, you're going to assign net classes. So here's that this DRAM again, there's data lines, there's address lines. Then there is a couple of command control bits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a specific net class. So what I did over here is I assigned a blanket to all these nets and they are called DRAMD. Then I have a net class for the addresses, the commands and the control. Now, next up, we are going to make some rules for this. So if you go to design rules, what you'll see over here, if you go down to high speed matched lengths is that I have included uh, an extra uh, check, let's say an extra design rule, it's checking on the DRAMD nets. The tolerance on these nets is maximum 120 millimeters. So that's already almost half of what we have calculated before. So much more in spec, let's say, than, than the maximum tolerance we can go with. Um, and this will now automatically be checked. So what you could do is um, we can check which tracks are in that net class. They are over here. And if we then look at these nets, so let's select the DRMD, what you'll automatically see, these are now all the nets that there are in that net class, the DRMD, and there's basically uh, no problem. The longest and the shortest are not further than 12 uh, centimeters away from each other. So that is an interesting one to check. Um, now, how would, how would it be if we make the tolerance much harder, let's say, to get? So I made a small example over here. I got rid of a lot of the tracing, but I made a new rule. The rule is um, set here to be at 12.5 millimeters. So meaning that um, we had, I think it's 38 millimeters and 46 millimeters were the shortest and the longest in the previous design. This will now be out of spec because of this smaller tolerance. And what you see is that it is indeed the case. We see that a couple of nets are highlighted over here. Now, how can we go ahead and change that? 
let's maybe select one of these nuts for instance this one the eight uh, it is highlighted over here altium has a very interesting uh, tool for that it's called the interactive uh, trace length tool so if you select it and you go to the net what you will see is that it will automatically make an accordion on that net and you see we are still seeing the red bar over here and it now turns into a green bar so over here we are still not inspect in terms of length with regards to the tolerance that has been set uh, if we go a bit further than at this point we are in spec with that 12.5 millimeter that has been set maybe let's do another one just to show you the options as well this is now uh, an accordion that is being used but there's all kinds of options uh, for instance you can you can always use uh, mitered lines as well so it looks something like this and there's a lot of options to change for instance spacing uh, between these parts in the length tuning uh, part of the track so this is a really interesting way and a very quick way to do length tuning so what you see over here is that there's still a couple of signals that are not in spec it's a matter of selecting them and then making sure that they are in spec again so this is a very quick way to make sure that your lengths are matched that they are within spec to make sure that your data and your clock will arrive exactly as they should. So I hope this was interesting for you and now it's clear how to do length tuning and why you need to do length tuning. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and of course, if you like the channel, feel free to subscribe. There's also a free community. I have put the link in the description below. So if you have any extra questions or if you want to have more information, feel free to join it. It's free. I'm happy to see you over there. Have a very nice day. Bye-bye.